Nick, exciting news. You've just basically signed an MOU with Latin America's first permanent magnet maker. And of course, you and I both understand what significant news that is. How did this deal come about? Well, like a lot of things with Meteoric, uh, Tracy, you come through relationships. We've got a fantastic Gavrel uh, person running around uh, Brazil. He's making fantastic inroads into both federal and state uh, government levels. And this is certainly something that's happening at the state level. So this uh, this facility has been on for sale for some time. It's been picked up by the FIMG, Federation of Industries in Brazil. Great, great fit, you know, government related, all about uh, pushing uh, industry uh, in, in Brazil. And it's been operated by Senai. Now, Senai are a vocational training facility, again, state government owned. So you're starting to see the synergies here. Very strong push by the state government. We've been talking about this for quite some time now, Tracy. Their their interest in rare earths and critical minerals and going downstream in that space. So again, this is another le- this is another sign of the support that we're seeing at the state government level uh, for uh, the pursuit of going further downstream in the critical mineral space and the rare earth space. So it's a very it's a very exciting uh, arrangement or offtake that we've signed with these guys. They are looking to produce a small quantity of magnets uh, in the first instance. It's really for research and it's about connecting entities like us at the mine level right through to industry down at the, at, at the base level. So the mine to magnet story with the government in the middle providing that bridge or that support to, to try and build that, that supply chain. So that's I a mean, fantastic way to get started. It's a great way for a company like us to get immersed into that downstream space. Uh, you know, we're going to learn a lot in that journey and uh, and hopefully the uh, the OEMs are as well. And that's how these uh, that's how these opportunities come together for, for doing something in the middle to connect both ends of that uh, mind and magnet story. So really, really pleased uh, to have that uh, relationship building with the state government further uh, and really excited to see where that goes in the near term. Many of you may not be following magnet makers the way we do over at Investor News and the CMI. And I just want to reinforce the statement that this is Latin America's first permanent magnet maker. Is that correct, Nick? First and only at this stage. Yes, that's absolutely correct, Tracy. Uh, but they have plans to, to expand as well. I think at the moment they're looking to do something like 100 tonnes of centre block magnet a year for various applications. But they are looking to build that. And uh, I'm hearing numbers of around two to 300 over time. So, uh, you know, and we're here to help uh, support and grow into that space. It's a great first step. Meteoric, of course, is a company that some of you may not know about. Of course, the name is fantastic because you came out of nowhere for me and I'm trying to catch up. Your most recent news release was a 47-page update, starting with scoping study uh, highlights. Would you like to start there? Sure. It's been uh, it's been a, a quite a long journey to get that, uh, that piece of work to market uh, and quite an interesting journey, too. At the very start, Tracy, we had this belief that we were going to be at this very, and it's all about the operating cost for me. It really is being an operator. I've operated lots of mines in various parts of the world. Uh, as an operator, it was the one thing you go away from work at the end of the day, your interview shift. How do we get our costs down? We are starting at the very left-hand side of that cost curve uh, with this study, and that is the most exciting thing. And we had a real belief uh, right from day one when we saw the quality of the, gra- uh, the, the grades of this deposit uh, we had a, started to develop an understanding of the recoveries that we were seeing in this deposit. We knew straight away we had something special here and that was going to be very much that left-hand side of the cost curve. And hey, presto, here we are. You've seen the graph. Uh, it's super exciting. So, again, that combination, very high grades that we keep talking about at cold air, and there's a geographical constraint which traps those clay particles in that uh, collapsed cold era. The associated rare earth elements, which are weathering down inside that cold air and attaching themselves to those clay particles, have got nowhere to go as well. They cannot escape that that physical constraint. Uh, And for that reason, we're seeing this ongoing process of enrichment with these grades. So grades, great metallurgy, um, very low cost operating environment and a brownfields mining area. All those things are contributing to this very, very low operating cost that we're seeing with this particular project. For all of you money bugs out there. I think you're going to be very impressed with the capital expenditures and the budget that you put forth to get this to production. Would you like to talk to us a little bit about this? Sure. So it's a it's a class five estimate. 
Um, it's done by Isenco, so it's done to a fairly cons a very conservative uh, uh, level of engineering at this stage. The two hundred ninety seven uh, million dollar uh, price tag that you see at the moment, super conservative, very high level estimate, a lot of fat built into that. And on top of that, a very large contingency. Now, we have been getting some pressure around why that number is so large. We don't think it's large considering the stage of the, of the study. So we're really comfortable with that number as a starting point. Bear in mind, that is not the number we are going to go and finance. We're not going to go and chase a $400 million capex story or funding solution to build this project. We've still got another two stages of engineering to go through before we get to an FID decision. Uh, the pre-feasibility uh, study work is underway and there's a bunch of opportunities that the guys have already guys and girls on the team have already seen uh, and and remarked to uh, to pursue in this next round of work to further bring down those that capital cost estimate the next round of work automatically reduces that uh, that contingency that we're seeing that 30 percent contingency reduces by 30 percent to around 20 percent uh, and those and the operating costs that come along with that as well. We'll, there's lots of opportunities that the uh, the team are seeing around operating costs, so we're certainly going to be chasing those down. So what you're going to see, we've started off with a conservative estimate, and I think that's the sensible approach to take with these projects. There's nothing worse uh, than trimming these things down to the bare bones at the scoping study level and forever chasing your tail with an increasing capital cost. We're not prepared to go in that regime. We've been very disciplined in that approach. We are starting off with a conservative number and we are going to chase that number down through the consecutive studies. So watch this space for improvements in that all important capital cost, operating cost, operating cost, operating cost. Can't say enough trophy. I love that word when it's associated with this project. You know, we really do have something special here. And of course, in addition to operating cost, I want to go back to that in just a minute. Can you just give some of our investor news audience members a bit of an overview about why everybody is looking at Brazil and meteoric resources, please. Thank you. Tracy, it's all about the uh, ionic clays in Brazil. I mean, it, it is the place to be. These ionic clays, they are special. They are fairly, they're new onto the scene. It's something we've been looking at with regards to China for a long, long time, but here they are. They're in the West. We've got fantastic grades, great basket, fantastic basket. We're seeing up to 31, 32, 33% uh, neodymium, praseodymium, and a percent of DYTB. Really great numbers, really exciting to magnet makers, and that's what makes Brazil so attractive to the SOEs right now. You're in Brazil, ionic clays and operating cost are one of your competitive features. Can you explain to our audience a little bit more about how this benefits your operating cost? Well, we all understand the pricing pressures we're going through at the moment with rare earths. You know, at the, we're at the very bottom end of a, of, the, of a cycle. I think everybody is everybody's tail is dragging at the moment. The known operators are struggling with pricing. The Chinese SOEs are struggling with pricing at the moment. That's becoming quite clear. Everybody is really right bouncing along the bottom. What this project has, and that's one of the reasons that why we put the, the, uh, the financial metrics out on, at spot price, was just to show that this project, if it was built now, it still has headspace. It's not making an awful lot of money, but it has headspace, and that resilience is super important in the rare earth space. You need to build a business that can weather these storms. And we have, at this very early stage, a business that looks like it's going to absolutely be able to weather these very low pricing cycles that you see come through the industry for a myriad of reasons uh, from time to time. This project is resilient, Tracy. So you are coming to the Critical Minerals Institute Summit, uh, the third one in Toronto, August 21st and 22nd, and you will be yeah. a keynote speaker. Will you be talking to this particular topic or... Have you decided what your speech is about yet? Tracy, uh, I'd love to keep it a surprise, but I can't help talking about this project. And I think uh, I'd love to talk more about the metrics of the scoping study at uh, at the summit. So looking forward to doing that, looking forward to meeting a whole bunch of new players there uh, and catching up with you folks again. And for everybody out there, for more information on Meteoric Resources, please go to the following link. Thank you, Nick, for joining us. Thank you, Tracy. A pleasure.